tonight on Inner Space. This is the Commodore 64. This is the most popular individual computer in the world. I take a trip down memory lane to a computer museum. Then later... So you're playing uh, Centipede, which was actually the first video game that was co-designed by a woman. I look at how computers have evolved. Welcome back. Since 2005, Brantford, Ontario has been home to a fascinating backyard institution called the Personal Computer Museum. Ooh, it's situated in a nondescript building right behind owner and serious technology geek Sid Bolton's house. And Sid also has a ginormous collection of video games in his basement. We'll get uh, that story to you in the coming weeks. Tonight, let's shed a nostalgic tear for the days of floppy disks and trackballs and pay a visit to the Personal Computer Museum. <laughs> Well, let's start at the beginning. Uh, why was it so important to found a computer history museum? Well, you know, I saw people throwing away computers. Like, yeah. you know, it happens all the time today where people dispose of technology. And so I decided that I wanted to rescue these things. And after a while, I realized I had a lot of them. And I realized there was a lot of people like me that actually like to go back in time and see the way we used to do things. Uh, what's the most common reaction when people walk in and see the collection of these? <laughs> now obsolete computers behind us? Well, there's really two things that happen. For people that actually use these computers, it's, oh my gosh, I remember this. Yeah. And then the second thing that happens is kids that have never seen the technology, <laughs> uh, they have a different reaction usually. Um, wow, this is crappy or whatever. Yeah. But it's interesting. After they start to actually play with these things and sort of you know, delve into how they work, it's uh, amazing the bond they actually have. And usually it has to do with video games. Uh, well, what are some of the most popular um, items that you have here at the museum that people tend to gravitate to? Well, of course, Commodore was the, the biggest computer company uh, you know, in the 80s, so it's kind of like the Apple of today. And this is the Commodore 64. This is the most popular individual computer in the world, uh, just celebrated its 30th anniversary. So you're playing uh, Centipede, which was actually the first video game that was co-designed by a woman. Back in the good old days, that's the 1980s in case you were wondering, there were lots of brands vying for people's desktop computer dollars. Today we hear about the PC and Mac wars, but back in the day there was more than that. There was yeah. Commodore, there was Apple, there was Atari, there was TRS-80, there, there was, was Timex, um, and there was the Amiga, yeah. of course. So we're talking Amigas. Tell me about uh, the Amiga systems that you have in front of us, this being the Amiga logo. Yeah, this is the Amiga bouncing ball. Uh, the very first Amiga is the Amiga 1000 over here. Uh, very interesting machine. It was the first machine to introduce the multitasking. It had uh, stereo and, and great graphics. It had 4,096 colors. There's no denying that computer technology has improved vastly. A single smartphone is more powerful than all the computers in this room combined. So what's there to be nostalgic about? Back in the day, if you had a Commodore or you had an original Apple or Atari, you had to do a lot of stuff to make it do anything. Today, that's not the case. Computers are just strictly a tool for most people. Yep. Uh, loading a program is as simple as clicking a, a button <laughs> yeah. on a mouse. And so I don't think people have this the same emotional connection. I think that's really what's exciting about these computers and that's what makes this place interesting to a lot of people is that emotional connection and they remember actually accomplishing something. And that's, yeah. for me, that's really what it's all about. Yeah, we're you know, part of a dying breed of people who existed before the internet. What's the internet? Oh, God. Ooh, that place is cool. So you said we're going to have a segment. He doesn't know what the internet is. It was just a joke. Sid knows? Yes. I think he probably does. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to have a segment on the actual video games you said on a future yes. episode of Interspace. That's his private collection. The video games are separate from the, the Computer History Museum, okay. which is open to the public for information. You can go to the website. It's pcmuseum.ca. So people can go. Yeah, they can go check oh, out cool. the Computer Museum. And if you ask him nicely, he may take you into his home and show you his video game collection. But we will show that to you on an upcoming episode of Interspace. It's impressive as well. Well, it's... the museum is amazing. And yeah. for me, I mean, this would be a point of interest, but I wasn't a huge computer kid growing up, but you, I mean, some viewers may know it, you actually build computers, so this, was this like a temple for you? It, it was, and it was so awesome to walk in and see the old clunky keyboards yeah. and trackballs and to, to see an Amiga 1000 there, you know, it was so much of my childhood was 
learning about computers and thinking about the future and what we could do with them and doing little animations using Deluxe Paint 3, which is a program he actually had the, a copy of in the box, wow. too. So all those little things of like, I remember this, and oh, you've got that, too, and all these things and how they fit together is just a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for sharing it with it's me It's so today. nice to see you excited like that. I love it. Look at that. Yeah. And Computers. you were Amiga guy, apparently. Amiga, right? all the way, man. My family had a Naboo. Remember those? No. Like, wait, it's not just Queen, Queen Amy Dallas Hope. Oh, okay. Naboo is a real it's computer. A computer. I'm, I'm not making it up. Oh. All right, well, that's all the time we got for you tonight, but you'll definitely want to catch the fourth episode of Doctor Who on Space. That is Saturday, tomorrow at 9 p.m. I cannot wait. On Monday, we're going to be recapping, analyzing, highlighting, and deconstructing the episode. It is called The Power of Three. It focuses on the pawns yeah. with and without the Doctor. They're two conflicting worlds. And we'll also be taking a look at both the Avengers and the Bond 50 box set, which lands on Blu-ray and DVD on Tuesday, September 25th. So lots of fun stuff coming up on the show next week. That's right. And tomorrow, this is really cool. It is Hobbit Day tomorrow. It marks the mutual birthday of Bilbo and Frodo Baggins. Yeah. Phil Bilbo, Bro, they, they would be together. We're mashed they up. They mashed up. Have a great weekend. See you next week. Pasta. I've had pasta. Pasta. Come listen to the my, my pasta tummy talk. Patrick likes pasta. Pasta, Patrick. Patrick, we got life insurance and pasta. Meanwhile, let's shut in a schnellick. That you make me. Don't you do that? Told you we're gonna have fun today, people.